everyone, so a couple of months ago I came across an amazing brush company called Hakugodo, um, which is a Japanese brand. I actually came across it at IMAX in Sydney in September and um, there was a stall full of these amazing exquisitely shaped brushes and Japanese people were serving um, and the brushes were amazing quality and they were so super soft and the designs of them were so unique, I'd never seen brushes like that before and I was like, what is this brand? I've never seen it before and ever since then um, I've been so in love with them and I actually bought a few brushes from them recently which arrived and um, I wanted to do a review to show you guys how amazing these brushes are and I will be doing close-ups of them later outside in the daylight, um, so stick around. There are quite a few different lines within Hakumodo's brush range and it ranges from just regular up to very expensive. There are about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six different lines. There's the S100 series which is this series signified by their um, orange handles and this which is um, 24 karat clear coating with brass and gold. There's the 200 series and the K series and G series. There's the Kokutan and Basic series. So it really ranges from cheaper than MAC to very, very expensive, probably one of the most expensive brushes out there, but you're definitely getting what you're paying for. Okay, and these are all the brushes that I received this time. So there's six of them, and it did cost me quite a bit, but I saved up for it because I really, really wanted it. The, and the brushes themselves were contained in this beautiful purple cup or the box, which is very stable. Um, it had a little tape sort of thing around it, a banner. So the brushes were contained within this foam thing, and each brush was in a plastic wrap, like this one. So there are quite a number of reasons why I really like these brushes. Um, number one, they are really soft. Like, I cannot express this through the camera, you have to feel it yourself. They're like the most soft brushes that you would ever, ever come across. That leads to number two. Um, number two is the quality and the fact that they are handmade. So each of these brushes are handmade and the technique that they use to make these brushes actually explain why they are so soft. So a lot of companies actually put the hairs in place um, and then they just trim them to the shape that they want. Which means that the hair at the ends are actually not the natural hairs where it's tapered out. So that really explains why a lot of brushes are quite scratchy when you apply them and touch them on your delicate face. But Hakuholo's way of making the brushes, there's a whole video about them if you want to see, but what they do is they use the actual natural hair tips and they just shape it with amazing skill. I cannot explain it. They just shape it with their own hands and they take out all of the hairs that are not good quality. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? And then they just take out all the hairs that are not appropriate for makeup brushes, which a lot of expensive, even expensive makeup brush companies do not do. Right, enough talking about what they do. You guys can actually go research for yourself. I'll put the link of the video down below. Um, I'm going to go through the brushes that I actually purchased. All right, so this is S100 finishing brush. It's an angled brush and this is 100% goat hair. Hakuhodo is cruelty free so you don't have to worry about that. Right, so this finishing brush is amazing for powder. Obviously it's super soft. It's quite large so you can just sweep it across really well and the handle is really really sturdy. I am in love with this and this was the brush that I got from IMAX which William bought for me. Quite expensive but it is definitely Makeup brush lovers would all say that it's definitely worth the investment. The rest of them are not in the orange line, they're just the simple basic black ones. And this one is the B103 BKSL powder blush brush and it's pointed. Okay, so this one is $72, it's also goat hair. It has a very pretty Hakuhodo um, name engraved in it and I think it's really good for contouring. I would also say for just applying powder and highlight on top of the cheeks around the section of the face and I would also say for blush, just like lightly tapping it on. Next is this brush which is really cute. The handle is quite short but I actually like the handles being short and this one is the blush brush medium angled 
G504. It looks pretty similar to this, but it's a different range. It's the G series, and it is a different type of hair. It's blue squirrel. So precisely made, I can't even see like a stray of hair, like one millimeter outside of the shape. And it's just really good for very defined shading of the face, um, of sculpting the cheekbones or just down the sides of the nose. And I won't even mention how soft it is anymore. I think I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> just know that they are the softest brushes that I've ever touched. Next is this brush, and it's the G555 Powder and Liquid Cream Foundation Brush. It's round and angled, and it's um, quite small, as you can see next to my finger. Um, but it's really good for precise application of like foundation. I think it would be really good for cream foundation. I haven't tried it yet, but I've tried it. I've tried using it for the purposes of blush and highlight, and it's excellent. Um, it's actually kind of like a stippling brush if you look closely. The pink is from the blush that I used it with, so it's naturally all white. And this is goat and polyester. So the bottom half is goat and the top half are polyester fibers. Next is this brush. It's the G513 eyeshadow brush, LC angled. I don't know what LC stands for. And this one is $42. It is Canada squirrel hair. Excellent for highlighting the brow bone, doing eyeshadow, blending out, or contouring down the sides of the nose. And I think this is probably the softest brush out of them all so far. Next is this pencil brush, which you have seen in my previous videos. It's the G Trip G5514 BKSL um, eyeshadow pointed, and this is horse hair. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's extremely accurate, like the shape. There's no straight hairs that come out, so it's just really good for smudging out um, eyeliner or applying a lot, uh, eyeliner with eyeshadows. Lucky Last is my very favorite of all, and it is this G005 eyeshadow round and flat um, brush. I have to zoom up for you guys, for you to see this, but it is amazingly precise. And it's really good for applying gel eyeliner in a vertical motion. I used to talk about my Sugar Mora 4F. That one's pretty much ditched in my brush collection and I use this every single day now. It's also good for just applying eyeshadow um, in a really precise way. So this is Weasel Hair and it is $15. And if you guys are looking for any kind of eyeliner brush or gel or cream eyeliner, this is one brush that I would highly recommend in conjunction with Max 209 or 210 brushes. So there are a couple of brushes that I couldn't try out because they were sold out and I would recommend to you guys to keep your eyes out for as well because they're very highly recommended. The G517, which is a paddle style foundation brush, and they come in different shapes. There's like a slightly square one, and there's a slightly round one. That's number 14 or number 20. And then there's the eyeshadow brush, G5523BKSL or G5528BKSL. And these two are absolutely sold out because they're so highly sought after. They're like the MAC 217 of Hakuhodo, but in a different um, design for Asian eyes. So all these brushes have um, silver or nickel brass ferrules and the handles are wood and they are glossy and coated. They will definitely last at least a couple of years or so. Alright, so if you have any more questions, um, leave them in the comments below. I had to film this really quickly before I go out to a Christmas dinner tonight. But um, now I'm going to take the camera outside and show you guys up close what these brushes look like because the beauty of these brushes are when you are really looking at them very closely. So let's go outside. Okay guys, please don't mind the traffic sounds and stuff. It's just I'm on my balcony at the moment. This is the box that it came in. Um, it's very sturdy. Okay, so this is the S100 finishing angled powder brush. It says Misaku. There's the brass and gold ferrule. And that is the hairs. It's just shining with softness. Um, the ends of this one has frayed a bit because I don't think I've taken good care of it. But it's not prickly at all. Then there are these black brushes. And this is what the handle looks like. Hakuhodo, silver. And hopefully you can see in this close-up shot how amazingly precise the shape is. So here's another one. This is the angled brush. Look how precise it is. It's very densely packed and it's very, very soft. Here is the angled stippling brush. 
And you can see that the top hairs are synthetic and the bottom ones are goat hair. Next is the angled shader brush. Can you just imagine how soft it is? Just imagine this is your finger touching it. And just for comparison, I've got my NARS number 16 brush, which is also angled, but you can just see the difference between a regular makeup brush, very stiff to the touch. Here is the pencil brush, and, and I've washed it a couple of times, but it still stayed shaped so amazingly, and you can just see that. And last but not least, my eyeliner brush. Now this doesn't look like much, but um, the way that it applies eyeliner, it is just superb. As you can see, it's flexible, but it's still stiff enough to maintain um, shape. And it gives you a lot of control when you're applying the liner. Excuse my chipped nail polish. I've been doing a lot of housework today. So these are officially my favorite brushes in the world. I hope that was useful for you guys. So have a happy new year and I will see you guys soon. Bye. Grace, your eye, your huge eyeball keeps moving around.